So today I'm going to be talking about a home radiation sensor that uh, Aeronet makes. And so this sensor here uh, that has an e-ink display, this will actually measure the radiation in your home and it will connect to your phone and give you like a readout for a couple of days. And this is kind of interesting to test out. Now I've probably had this unit for, I want to say maybe two months, maybe a little bit longer. And I've been uh, kind of running it through its paces, like kind of testing it up against some strong radioactive sources and then just leaving it like in different places in the house to see how it does. And it's interesting to see how the radiation level does fluctuate in my house or if I have like something that's uh, moderately radioactive that is uh, stored kind of maybe like three feet away from it, it will actually go up. And so it is a sensitive enough detector to detect um, different types of radiation. It's mainly uh, the sensor that's in here will detect beta, gamma, and x-ray radiation. Uh, but for, for most intents and purposes, I think it's gonna be more, it's gonna be better for like a gamma and x-ray type of radiation detection. You can put this detector like right up against like a uranium glazed plate or something like that and you will see that that beta radiation is being detected by the sensor. Now the sensor that's in here is a pin type detector. Now when I first heard that I, I didn't really know much about pin, pin type detectors and so I was thinking that's like you know the size of a pin like the head of a pin so it must be really bad at uh, detecting radiation. Well it's not the case. The, the sensor is probably about the size of this sticker. Uh, maybe a little bit larger and what it is, they call it a pin type detector because of the P and N junction uh, type of semiconductor that's used to detect the radiation that's inside of here. That's why they call it a pin. And um, so far it's doing uh, fairly well. I have it uh, turned on right now, so it will like uh, have like a little beep for radiation events like when it actually detects radiation. But I don't think it's actually uh, doing that for every time it detects radiation. Uh, probably because it'd be too annoying to hear because you just be constantly hear it, hearing it beeping. Um, and so every once in a while you hear it like beep. But if you put it up to like a really strong source, it will beep um, a, a lot. <laughs> like, a, you know, like a, a uranium glazed plate or a radium watch or something along those lines. And so it will kind of like detect radiation as like a radiation detector, but it's not a Geiger counter. It is not something that uh, I would recommend taking into an antique shop to look for radioactive antiques or to like a uranium mine to look for uranium or something like that. This is more geared towards uh, home monitoring. So if you wanna like just kinda keep an eye on the radiation level in your home or uh, in an area like to see like people that are walking by to see if they like, kinda like set off the, the radiation or you could actually just put it in some place and check the radiation level uh, over that week and see if there was anything that kind of like spiked. Uh, the only caveat that I've seen with this is that it, um, the way I have it configured, which is to take a measurement every minute, uh, you could do like one minute, 10 minutes, 30, an hour, a day, I think that's what it breaks down to. Uh, but the way I have it is the most battery intensive, uh, data intensive way to measure radiation for this device. And so the way I have it set up is that if you don't connect this to like a phone or like an iPad that has an app that's like just formatted to or set up to automatically connect, uh, you'll start losing uh, certain days of information if you don't connect and offload that information. Because the, like I said, the way I have it set up, it's just, it's just filling up the information too fast, like the, the buffer that's in here. And so, what I try and do is I try, I try and just have it like check it like every other day or something like that. But if I'm gone for a couple of weeks and I don't have something set up here at home to uh, just automatically connect to the device, I will lose that data uh, for some of those days until I reconnect. And so that's something to think about with this. Uh, other than that, it's actually pretty cool. I really like it. Um, and for the price, I think right now it's like under a hundred dollars, which is pretty good for what this thing is. I think it's like right around like $80 right now. I think they're having a sale on this. Uh, and so they wanted me to talk about it and kind of show it to my audience. And so I, I think it's kind of cool. And for the price point, it's kind of interesting to have in your home, uh, kind of stuff like that. Uh, but what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to take out strong, some of my, uh, stronger sources. 
like uh, that radium post from a smoke detector and then like one from an americium smoke detector to see uh, if those gamma rays will actually be detected by this because it's kind of it's right on the edge of that detection range and then also a really strong uh, thorium lens. And so I'm gonna see like uh, where I can put this, like how far away I can be and, and have this like show up because I think it really depends on the source that's uh, in the room because like I, I've put some thorium lenses uh, by this probably about three to four feet away and the radiation level did go up slightly. And so it is sensitive enough to detect radioactive items that are uh, placed near it. And you can like put it up to things that are radioactive to see if it is radioactive because it is sensitive enough. Uh, the question is, I don't know if it would uh, be sensitive enough to detect um, uranium glass. Um, I should test that out. I mean, good test because that's one of like the weaker things you can test is like uranium glass. Some uranium glass is like is kind of weakly radioactive. Um, yeah, but I'll be using my uh, Rad Eye B20 ER uh, that I just got uh, to kind of like confirm the radiation readings on it to, to show you how hot these items are uh, before I put it like right up against this to see if uh, see if I can uh, I don't want to say break it but uh, push it to its limit. Uh, all right, let's get started. So I have this large thorium lens element about, I would say, probably a foot and a half away from the detector right now. And the radiation level does keep going up. It started off at 0.08 and now it's up to 0.27. Not bad. This also has levels of alarm basically color-coded down on the bottom there between green, yellow, and red. And so since it's up to 0.27, it's like a medium warning. I went back to 0.24. So it's about 60,000 counts per minute, 62, 61, 62. So I switched this over to dose rate, and it's reading about 51, 52 microsieverts an hour. And also for reference, the radicode is saying right around the same thing as what the rad ib 20 er was saying. Now let's see what happens when I put that element right up against that sensor. So now the Arnet radiation monitor is right up against it. And that is given a pretty close dose rate to what the RAD-IB20 ER with a gamma filter on it and 103G was showing as well. And so that's very encouraging that these dose rates are so close. That means that this is very accurate. All right, so now it's time to kick it up a notch with that americium post. As you can see, there's actually no change with that americium source right up against the detector. And that's because it's outside of the energy range that this radiation detector can detect.
So I'm curious what probably about maybe 10 microcuries of radium-226 is going to do to this guy. It's about seven inches away and it's showing around almost two microsieverts an hour of exposure. We'll see what the rat eye and the radicode have to say about those numbers and to see if I can get this thing to go above what it's rated for or take it to the limit and see what overload actually looks like on this unit. That's an impressive amount of radiation. It's almost 10 million, 9 million counts per minute coming off of this radium source. Seven hundred, six hundred microsieverts an hour. Now let's see what this guy does. That is the most activity I've ever heard that buzzer give right now. So I'm really curious to see what this comes up with. Let it cook for a second there. So this has taken far beyond its limit, so I don't expect it to behave normally. But I'm kind of curious what happens when it gets pushed past the limit that it's supposed to be able to detect stuff at. So it looks like this isn't going to move any further up than the 3554. I'll let it try and gather one more data set before I take it off the source and see if it actually goes any higher or lower. Yeah, it looks like it isn't going to go any higher than probably about 3500. That's probably its topped out range. Perhaps, or maybe that's just what it's detecting off of this radium source. Since it is a mix of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, what this detector is detecting is beta and gamma radiation, which there is quite a bit coming off of this radium-226 source. Interesting test. It's actually doing a lot better than I thought it would do. At least it's not freaking out and just shutting down. It's a good sign. Yeah, so it definitely seems based off of those numbers that the AirNet was actually over-responding to this source because they were showing about 3,000 more microsieverts per hour than what was showing up on the RadEye B20ER with the gamma filter. So that's interesting. I guess that's how it is dealing with all that extra radiation detection is it's uh, overestimating stuff. I really didn't think that this little AirNet radiation sensor was going to perform so well, actually. Uh, I was kind of surprised because uh, this was pretty spicy sources. It was interesting to see how it didn't respond to the Amaris CM241, but that would make sense because in their spec chart, it actually lists the gamma energies that, it's, that this detector is going to be able to see, and the Amaris CM241 is just right outside of that range. So it's, it's interesting to see how it's just blind to, th to that material, but uh, everything else it picked up on pretty well. So the radiation detection range on this is a thousand microsieverts, which is one millisievert of dose rate or a hundred millirem of dose rate. And so you can actually switch the microsievert and rem setting in the back here. You can just take off this battery compartment and there's like these little switches back here that'll allow you to switch the unit into the different measurement um, choices, which are just rem or sievert, 
which is kind of cool. I know some people like to use uh, millirem, microrem uh, to measure dose, and so this will give you that. So the total dose that this can collect is 1,000 millisieverts or 100 rem. So if you'd like to pick up an Aeronet radiation sensor for your home, uh, I'll leave a link at the bottom of the screen right here, or you could go into this video's description and uh, use the link in there. I think there's also a link to buy these on Amazon as well. I know right now they're having a 25% off sale until the end of July. And so right now I believe this is selling for uh, $89 and normally it's 119. So that's a 25% savings. And so that's kind of cool if you want to get into this and have just some radiation sensor that you can put on a shelf somewhere or uh, you know wherever you want really and uh, monitor the radiation. Now like I said it is not weather sealed and so if this thing gets wet or if it gets dropped really hard it will break or if you leave it out in the sun it can ruin the e-ink uh, display and make it to where it won't function anymore. And so that's something to think about when you set this up. You want to be kind of like you know, have it in like a, a common area where people are going to be, uh, where it's not going to be in direct sunlight uh, and it's not going to be um, subjected to high amounts of moisture. So that's something to think about. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.